Crash Course Live is presented by Smash It Demolition Derby and the 2016 Basher Cast. Demo Derby Masters. Winter Slam 2016. Ultimate Derby and Blizzard Bash in Capital City Carnage. Sciopa Racing and SciopaRacing.com. Reckless Abandoned Derby Apparel at RecklessAbandonedGear.com. And Derby Inc. Magazine. Live it, breathe it, be it, Derby Inc. This is the Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast, recorded live at the FingerLakes1.com studios in downtown Seneca Falls, New York. And now your host, Chris Marquardt. Good afternoon, good evening, welcome to episode number 169, <laughs> once again, <laughs> making it very risky to open the microphones to start the show. <laughs> one We're of these days. about something important. I, I know, but we don't know how public that is. Oh. Sometimes when Ben comes back from shows, he's got all <laughs> sorts of great information that nobody's supposed to know about. <laughs> oh, it's pretty public, because he said it right on the uh, live stream in Florida. Did he? Yeah. Cool. Yep. Gotcha. Um, so, uh, uh, Casey Smith going to be joining us here momentarily on, uh, episode number 169, and then we're going to catch up with Johnny Gullo, talking with Jim Olin from Finger Lake Speed World. At the end of the night, uh, big news over the weekend, JC Molly is coming away with the win in the Team Derby down there, the first ever Team Derby, the Southern Nationals shootout in mm -hmm. Brooksville, Florida, uh, Josh and Ben, fresh off the flight home, returning here, uh, I know you guys had a great time down there, uh, overall you know your impressions of florida and, and and what the place was like oh i mean uh it was the fairgrounds i keep forgetting the name of it but it's hernando county fairgrounds yes. you said it at the end of the show yeah you nailed the clothes yeah you had it then yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. but uh no a great facility i mean it has a lot of potential i mean we talked about it on the show a lot down there um and they're very anxious to to accommodate you know a larger show it could easily do it. There's like 40 acres plus of of, of uh, real estate there they could play with for terms of parking area. and everything else. Yeah. And the track, they actually made the track smaller for that show. Um, so the track could potentially be like 80 feet longer, they were saying. So it, it's Dragstrip. they could add more stands. They have access to more grandstands. So uh, potentially it could be a humongous uh, show and a great facility to be at. Um, you can't beat the weather. No. In February, I mean, 70-some degrees. I mean, there's a little rain, but, I mean, that didn't seem to bother bother anything. Um, 1100 bucks raised for that gentleman that yes. was in the car accident. Yep, yep. Uh, Tustin's, Tustin's yeah. I think it was Tustin's. Um, yeah, that was a good thing. They they raised some good money for that. Um, uh, the little girl that came out of, came down with Mad Mike's group, that uh, she she did a triple header. She, uh, she won the... Po the power wheels she won a raffle to win a power wheels and then she won she won something else she won like three things Jeez, and cool. uh, good night and that's what i said he's oh, all she's starting a trend for your camp mad mike don't jinx me he said don't <laughs> jinx me <laughs> but uh then he was down there that was the 48th run on his red line motor and crack uh, block and he won it yep <laughs> yep so uh but uh no overall a great great event great time Everybody had a good time that I know of. Um, the Smiths came down there with them Vicks. Them Vicks were nasty, and they sounded sounded nasty. Right. Um, but uh, they definitely put some hard iron together. And uh, the, I mean, it, did Ma came. did Ron McClung end up getting longest toe, seeing as how Johnny and uh, Gumby flew? <laughs> I think he probably would have. He told me he he's, he he bought that truck like three weeks ago, less than a month. Yeah, he's had that truck, and he's he had to do an oil change there when he got there, and he's got twelve thousand miles on it. Well on his way. Insane. And uh, so he was he was pretty excited. He wanted to he wanted to get junk that car down there so he could find a nice nice clean one to haul back with him. And uh, he did a super cool thing. He gave out all the uh, Matchbox Demolition Derby cars to all the Power Wheels kids. Nice, cool, and. Um, <laughs> And he's 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 a super cool guy. We had fun with him. I see they were, he was he was out cruising the junkyards when he was down there. I see yeah, he, he had some bumpers. Oh and yeah, some stuff. he 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 was cruising junkyards. He was hitting all the attractions. He was telling us about some go kart track that was local that goes like ten stories up in the air, and then comes back down. So he was pretty excited about that. that and fun. and uh, Jason Sauer was there doing had, tagging had, stuff up and yep. had to remind paint. Ron that they don't derby go karts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, I'd be surprised what happens on there on go karts. But yeah, Johnny flew in, Troy Tag flew in, um, 
you know, the Siopas were there. Mark and Steve. Jimmy Johnson was there too. Wasn't yeah, he? yeah. He Uncle was Jimmy, there. Uncle Jimmy showed <laughs> up, and he was uh, he was a character as always. Hard you know? to believe. And yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was what real. knowledge did he bestow on you? <laughs> didn't really actually. Didn't I felt no. bad because I didn't really get to. We didn't get to <laughs> talk to to Jimmy that much. Uh, when we got there, we were getting stuff. You know, trying to get stuff set up and. Ran into a couple of hurdles there because there was more people in the booth than it was supposed to be. So <laughs> we uh, Ben started throwing people out. No, no, Josh, Josh, Josh. I walked away. I counted to ten and walked away. Um, but uh, the frantic phone call that I got when I was down in Dundee from Josh made well, me it, well, it settled, but everything was manageable. Yeah, everything <laughs> was manageable. It's just when we got trained here it was just something that wasn't included in the training seminar so we were like well we better call chris and figure out what was what up. wasn't what do you mean when he wanted to start pulling wires and going through the pa system yeah that and everything else we're like he started messing with all these everything i'm like nip time out don't touch <laughs> nothing don't touch nothing this is where we run it well that you can't run it there time out that's what i, was I know i he didn't even want it gave us his resume very knowledgeable knowledgeable guy very nice guy don't get me wrong people don't please don't take this the wrong way um in the end you know everybody was laughing have a good time and 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 basically he was pretty impressed on what the equipment gets put through and how it still works Mm -hmm. so um yeah just so you know ben i didn't know you were going to be going through that pa system otherwise I well we didn't know well well well, we didn't i mean i got that phone call and I, i told josh that I just I just gave him one four letter word. That was it. That's all. I had. <laughs> yep. So basically, it all worked out good, and you know, and, and Josh and I kind of stressed a little bit. We're like, boy, you know, show that, the radio guys how to do it over there. We we, we stressed a little bit. We're like, man, now now we got to kind of mentally because we were preparing ourselves, you know, to keep the people at home busy, and then we're like, well, shit, now we got it. We got <laughs> sponsor spots that run and this and that. And Welcome to our world, huh, Chris? So we're like. <laughs> We're like we all right. I looked at Josh. We get, we're like we'll do this. We're gonna do this. Well, then they had a DJ that came up. Now the next thing you know, here comes a local radio guy. He's like, yeah, I'm supposed to be talking in between, and that's when I shut it down. I said, <laughs> I says, once we push this screen right here, push that button. I says, only people talking are him and I. Nice. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And I like that. afterwards, the guy pretty much told, went to the radio station guy, he's like, that's how you're supposed to do these events. And they were pretty happy because, I guess, we plugged all the sponsors and the advertisers more than the radio station normally does that they Good. that they have do it. So, with I guess, live reads. With live reads that we, they hadn't rehearsed. You know what it, it is, great. though, too? Yeah. Is cause like, I and know. they were essays. <laughs> they were essays. Josh took a look at it and said, sir. There's no effing way I'm going to read this whole thing. <laughs> and so we kind of ad-libbed it a little bit. I, I read the one full thing at first and and, uh, and uh, went through it the first time. Then after that, I just kind of shook my head and says, no, we're going to shorten that a little bit. <laughs> well, you know what it is, too, with sponsors? I know, like me personally, and I'm, I think you guys all feel the same way. Is if you know a business comes out and sponsors a derby, you feel like oh you have to you have to go yeah, the extra mile because it's it unfortunately it's hard to get sponsorship for derby, especially when they stand there and tell you. Remember well, that? And then Remember I that wasn't happened? there for that, but I you mean, were pretty it, excited when you told me about it. I mean, there was there was actually sponsors uh, a, a main sponsor that actually dropped out from what I from what I understand, and uh, then this other sponsor, this the, the A plus roofing. Uh, stepped up cool and was the head sponsor and and they had the rotary there and they had the you know a couple of they had the peanut shack there and cool and uh they, they, you know they papa john's was there. papa john's is the big one i heard papa papa john's john's. Is the big one i had josh directing traffic out to the midway to get papa john's pizzas yep yep he was he was dropping he says they can you could get a whole pizza and bring it back to your seat and it's only like five bucks. Yeah, it was. It was. It was, it was, it was very cheap. We we'll doing commercials with uh, Peyton Manning next year for Papa John's. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. Casey Smith might be doing some commercials too because he's going to be well traveled this year. Casey's joining us on the hotline. He came away with the Mad Dog Award down there in Brooksville. He and his he and his boy, um, as we heard reference to a minute ago, when, when Ben was recapping the action down there, those those Brown Vicks were something to behold, and and get, you guys drove the wheels off him, Casey. Nice work. Yeah, I can hear Ben real well. I have a little trouble hearing you, Chris. But, yeah, we, we went down there. Uh, 
who were volunteered by Jason Sowers to attend this show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, probably about four and a half weeks ago or something like that, Jason was down here with Jace, you know, at the J.C. Molly's Motorsports compound and, you know, having a good time. He was parading around that, you know, Ohio State car that he painted in Miami and that, and, uh, which was, I guess, probably Sciopas, but Yep. He come back and he said, "Hey, there's this great thing going on in Florida, and you guys got to go because I told him you'd come." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Well, okay, <laughs> you know." So, but anyway, long story short, uh, this national event um, it was a lot of fun, and y- you know, w- what better place to to go in the middle of February from where we're from than Florida? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, it was like first time in 24 plus years my wife says well are you gonna like build cars we go for it or what (laughs) 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 Um, you know and to build cars in in, you know january february in our neck of the woods there's a lot entailed in that i mean you guys being from new york you can relate you know we gotta drag them out from out back in the snow get them in get them thawed out etc you know but we built these two cars in about four weeks and uh we come down and uh you, you know, like you said with Mike DeFresh, you having 40-something runs on the red line. This is the time of year we're supposed to be getting our stuff ready for a regular season, yep. not really stretching it out any farther. So, you know, yep. we just said, you know what, let's go have some good times. Let's enjoy Florida. Let's try to help develop this show. Uh, mm-hmm. They're really trying to do a great thing here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and I can tell you it was a successful show, and this is how I know, because at the end of the evening, we had so many fans come out of the stands and talk to me and my son and say, thank you guys for coming down mm-hmm. and participating and putting on a show because it was absolutely fabulous. So yeah, that's great. that yeah. itself was worth the 1,200-mile trip and everything else we went through. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Florida fans that attended this show, um, all the work that the uh, J.C. Molly shop did, Mm-hmm. behind the scenes, you know, to get these other cars out there for the other teams, yep. you know, to get the, everybody we met, you know, Johnny Gallo, uh, Troy Dagg, I uh, met Jimmy Johnson for the first time uh, in, in Gumby. I, I mean, for them guys to come out here, you know, to take time out and participate, these guys really did a huge effort behind the scenes to make this a big deal. And I know for a fact they're really working on next year already. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, I heard that yeah. they've already got they've already got some excavator crews lined up to to get well, the cars off faster. The 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 guy the the one guy we were talking to uh, was kind of, was in charge guy it that night. He pretty much came up and gave us a big thumbs up afterwards and says we're already planning on another one. Are we talking yeah, February or so, are we talking November? I mean, obviously, you know, the details will come out as the year unfolds. But Yeah. Um, I, I mean, honestly, it, it was, you know, to come down here and anybody who's in this sport that's ever left their hometown ranch to go an extended distance to run a show, you know, there's a lot of things that come into play. You got your logistics, number one. How are we getting our stuff there? What do we got to take with us? Mm-hmm. What kind of reception are we going to get? Uh, you know, there's no, you know, the old saying, there's there's nothing like having home field advantage. Right. Um, we had one of the best receptions ever coming in from out of town, and everybody was there uh, to welcome us, enjoy our run, you know, win or lose, mm-hmm. and come down and congratulate us and thank us at the end. So we, we were happy with that, you know. Um, and getting the Mad Dog Award, hey, we, 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 we didn't go all that far just to hand it over to somebody. I mean, we knew obviously there'd be a little bit of allegiance and maybe, you know, maybe somewhat of a stack deck going in there, but we brought the iron to compete with it. We were, uh, we were expecting to have a battle on our hands and we did. Yeah. And, uh, you know, congratulations to the winners and congratulations to everybody that come out, you know, including like Stephen Sickles from PA come down with Compact. Serena Brandt flew in. Mm-hmm. Uh, her and John, she rented a car locally. So it, overall, it was a really neat mix of things to go on and, uh, you know, and learn a little bit more about the stuff out west and the big things they got coming in Utah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it, it's, yeah. It's looking it's it's looking like I don't know how we can't go out and at least check it out or participate or compete. Yes. yes oh, yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah, yeah you have to do that. If your wife loves Florida, she'll definitely love Utah. And it's a dry heat, so you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you'll you'll love you'll but, love them tracks out there. You'll you'll definitely but, feel right at home. But I, but I mean in general, I mean I think you'll see this show, you know, for next year. I think these guys will probably have a really good structure that comes out. You'll see a good format for classes. Mm-hmm. You'll see some really some really detailed outlines for rules. I'm sure they'll have a, a top-notch staff here. Uh, you, you know, a lot of people can't appreciate what goes into making an event, but I can because, you know, our, our logo, you guys seen our SMW logo, Smith mm-hmm. Metalworks, we build. That saying, we build, yeah, we build cars, but um, we're all about building the sport mm-hmm. um, in whatever aspect it might be, you, you know, whether it be, you know, building a rear end for our stuff. I mean, we build pretty much all of our own stuff, but, you know, we're helping a kid build a car for the first time. Or, or, But we really like seeing people build the sport, no matter where you're from uh, or what region you're in. Maybe it's not a strong region. I mean, we take for granted our sport up north because it's a common thing. Down here, we are at the bottom row of growing the sport forward. So... Mm-hmm. When we choose to participate in it, I think we all got a responsibility to take it in the right direction. And uh, it's going to take some people from out of the area to come down here and help cultivate that. Absolutely. Oh, definitely. A huge out of state presence. With, you know, we mentioned a bunch of the names Troy Tag from California, mm-hmm. Mike yeah. DeFrecia from Pennsylvania, you guys from Pennsylvania. Um, it, I mean, really a huge population from Pennsylvania when you look at the Siopas and, and Steve and, and uh, John and Serena. So, well, yeah, that, that's kind of it. You know, like I, <laughs> I ran into Steve here a while back. Actually, it was at Jason Fowler's art gallery, you know, at Most Wanted Fine Art. And I told Steve, I said, yeah, I said, I can't remember if we've ever actually had the chance to trade paint yet. And, uh, <laughs> you, you know, and. It was kind of funny because I'm like, holy cow, I can't believe I actually had to drive 1,200 miles to actually trade punches with Steve. Yeah, you know, and at the, at the driver's meeting, you know, when Chance was drawing our pill or whatever for the heat, Steve kept telling Chance, don't you pull our name, don't you pull our name, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. So it, it was it was fun. You know, unfortunately, I, don't, I think Steve had a little bit of an issue going on with his car. He didn't make it out in the future, but. Uh, you know, there'll be another derby somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he blew, blew the rear end on it. Mm. And, you know, I, I hate seeing that because if I'm going to lose or win, I'd rather be on the track, not in the pits to somebody, right. you know, and and, uh, and I know he's a great competitor, and I'm sure that was a little disappointing to him, but mm. I'm sure we'll get a chance to try that out again sometime. So, but, but yeah, the Mad Dog Award, uh, that to me, that's as good as anything you can win, you know, beside the money, because apparently we had the hammer down and we were, uh, we were oh. making ourselves noticed. Oh, that was a hundred percent well deserved, and he definitely deserved that, hands down. Because <laughs> uh, I know today I had a couple messages on Facebook, and people were kind of like, "Hey, what's that? Uh, what do you guys got for an engines?" You know, yeah. and, <laughs> um, <laughs> and surprisingly, I mean, we we come from an area with some great engine builders, like you know Brett Johnson or Redline, and mm-hmm. several other people. But uh, them them are our engines. We built them in house. You know, I got a four hundred six full roller. That honestly, it's quite tired, and I was fully expecting to leave most of it on that track. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So you gonna ask him about the you gonna ask him about the builds at all, or gonna let that one go? What's that? That answers that. What's that? (laughs) (laughs) He knows everything. He's gonna ask now. He's good. Just I was was just impressed with the. I was impressed with the builds, Casey. That's all. Yeah, he. Pre- the part? What's that? I, I didn't hear you there. You no, I was just, I was just, t- I was just telling these guys about the about the O three and newer that you that you put the the K frame in and and uh, Josh and I were yeah. talking about it on the Josh and I were talking back and forth a little bit on the on the trip back yesterday and and. Uh, you know, it's something up around this area, actually. I mean, we always talk about Ricky Englehart. I mean, he, uh, years and years ago, when the, when the old threes were kind of getting sniffed around, he actually, that's the, he he, play, he was going to play around with putting a uh, uh, that style K-frame in old three and newer, and, but back then you couldn't, 
you know you couldn't weld them in you had to you had to it had to be bolted in so and uh, right. then to, then to fully see the way you guys had that one and and uh it just it definitely got my wheels rolling again and and uh Brian's gonna run one here this year, so I told him he's not junking the K frame. So <laughs> Yeah. No, I mean and there's a couple ways you can do it. I mean with the rules for this team show, we were a little open there with uh yeah. how we could do some things. Yep. So it was a very good opportunity to try this out and uh you know, and I'm not gonna take full credit for this project because Chris Furster <clears throat> and uh, Mike Henshaw had kicked it around. <laughs> Chris had this there and we talked about it and mm-hmm. Uh, I know that out East PA, there's a couple guys looking at doing it, but uh, it was a good opportunity to see how it would fit up and work, and it worked really well, very easily. Uh, you could weld it in, or actually, if you want to take a little extra time, you can physically make it bolt into the frame as well. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, you know, hopefully some of the promoters will be a little more open to maybe letting that in mm-hmm. uh, outside of the regular cutting another Ford apart to build a Ford. Right. Uh, just because of the, the time and, the, you know, a lot of the stuff it takes to do that. I mean, it makes a very good car when you're done, but, you know, we're fortunate because out of our camp, you know, we can run Mopars, we can run GM power plants, so we're uh-huh. kind of ambidextrous there. So. Right. And our little 318s are, are very good little engines, and it worked well with that application. So. Yeah. And it was uh, it was definitely a hard little sucker up front. Chance said uh, he had a good time, and he, uh, he he was a little disappointed how it ended with you know being there in that spot he was. And right. He, he had every intention of taking take it out there and ripping them wagons, you know, in pieces. <laughs> so, oh yeah, yeah. You know, to be continued, I guess. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yep. Very imp- very impressive. I mean, they're very very nice, and uh, definitely got my. Uh, Got my wheels turning. <laughs> How are things for Bad Habit these days? What's the season look like? Uh, looking pretty good. Uh, you know, some pretty exciting stuff coming up. Uh, they landed, uh, you know, our hometown bullring, the Great Stoneboro Fair. Yep. Uh, you guys have been there and seen that track. A couple times. Uh, you know, the Mecca of Demolition Derby in Western PA. And uh, they're, they're going to be over Labor Day weekend, the Saturday-Sunday show. Uh, two days of destructions at Stone Row Fairgrounds. Very nice. First time ever a team show at our Stone Row Fair. Very cool. Uh, oh. They introduced that. They've got some very exciting things uh, new to introduce to the team show. Uh, one of the things, and if and anyone listening, you know, keep tuned into the Bad Habit Facebook page. They keep all the updates out there. Uh, they have this rule or. Uh, I guess it's when you pass inspection or tech for the team show guys. Uh, and this is what's unique. You know, everybody reads rules and you worry about what car should I build, you know, to show up. Well, <clears throat> maybe this time you're not worrying about night number one. Maybe you're going to worry about where your car is on night number two for the feature. Because when you pass tech on the first night, you're going to be given a stick a quarter inch by four inch wide by four foot long flat stock. And that's your fix it plate material for the vehicle for the feature. So, you know, <laughs> they're not telling you that you can only have a two by two or you can put it here or whatever. They're giving you a chunk of stock and saying, look, <clears throat> here's the material. The details will be laid out at the driver's meeting. That's all you're allowed to use on the car wherever you want it and unlimited nine wire for feature cars. Quarter, so quarter by out of a, quarter by four quarter, by four foot? Quarter inch thick, four inch wide by four foot long. I guess you can cut it up in the ah, that's a lot. by four <laughs> inch or a foot by four inch or whatever. Yeah. Oh that's awesome. <laughs> you know, and, and I don't know the details of you know, I don't want to get anybody into trouble or make, right. kind of, you know, <laughs> you know, trying to make judgments as far as bridging things or welding, you know, they're going to cover the specifics of the driver's meeting. Mm-hmm. But, you, you know, when it comes to the car choice for that show, you know, it's kind of like racing. Yeah. You know, if you're running a 400 lap race, it ain't about where you are the first 200, it's the last 20. Yep. So mm-hmm. I, I guess it's going to be kind of a neat thing. 
Uh, the other thing that's on the table there is to help entice a lot of people from out of town to come come compete. Um, there's some work being done for about five or six host garages in the area within five to ten minutes from the fairgrounds. So if uh, somebody feels like they might, you know, it might be difficult to pack all your stuff up and come, there's going to be a list of host garages you can hook up with. That's cool. That's awesome. About, uh, have use of a full garage as far as welders, torches, plasma cutters, et cetera. Oh, Crazy. Man. That's what awesome. Think? What are you doing Labor Day weekend? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No doubt. You, you know, cool. and, uh, and, and I'm not going to name names of those. Or it only takes torches to do that thing. But, you know, that's something that, you know, I did interject to them guys. You know, I said, if you can do one thing, I, I welcome the competition and I welcome the people to come from out of town because it gives the crowd a really good show mm-hmm. and it gives them the ability to see the, you know, the, the diversity and the builds and the, and the geographic areas. So, it, you know, that was something that I thought would be very beneficial. You know, so somebody coming from outside of town didn't feel like they were at a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they don't have to, literally don't have to pack Bring up their whole, their shop. whole shop. Right. You know. And that's, and that's that's tough to do. I mean, yeah, it is. anybody that's been in this sport, when you got to leave town and go somewhere else, you know, if you, you forget a screwdriver and you need yep. it, you know how bad it hurts you. So, mm-hmm. well, I mean, you, you, you've seen it yourself down there. J.C. Molly had like a 24-foot, 24 or 28 foot u-haul truck and we packed we that took like two and a half three hours to pack that he had everything everything you can imagine he basically packed up three quarters of the shop and put in the back of it you know and and it was open for anybody to use if somebody you know lost something or forgot something or needed something that's correct you know that was open to us and you know fortunately You know, we we come out of the heat and didn't need much attention other than a battery charger. <laughs> no, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know that's that that's always nice. I yeah. mean, to have that option and yep. and like I said, that goes back to them guys at the Southern Nationals being very hospitable. Mm-hmm. Uh, there wasn't one aspect of this derby down here where we didn't feel welcome. We didn't feel like we were uh, you know a disadvantage. Uh, you know, we knew what we were getting into when we come down here, and uh, we enjoyed all of it. You know, nothing I enjoyed more than opening up that four barrel on that 406 and sticking it to whoever I could give it to. <laughs> you got that right. That's something that sounded awesome, too, I'm telling you. <laughs> so, I'm have to listen with the sound on it yeah. uh, and hear it on Mopar. i tell you what. Like, yeah, yeah, they sounded good. It's badass. Well, Casey, man, yeah, I ain't even so sure it really broke a sweat. You know, I was pretty impressed. But <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't, wouldn't have been for, you know, I, I was getting a little crowded at that one end. I had some guys kind of hovering around there, and, mm-hmm. and, and you know they were just kind of cutting off some of my routes. And, and Jay, you know, uh, Joe Lombardi there, you know, he finally got a piece of that left front wheel and and it, um, freakishly broke a bearing or something, and it mm-hmm. wouldn't let it turn. And, and you know, what was really odd is if we were back home at any other track surface, that tire would have skidded around in the mud or the slick. Yeah, but that track. With that sand and clay mix, mm-hmm. very unique. I can tell you, a fir- very unusual surface. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like you guys said, it rained there pretty much off and on all day. Mm-hmm. Didn't really affect it much, but, y- you know, it would pull some power out of the vehicle. And, and boy, if you were pushing it, you, you might as well have a snowplow on. Right, right, right. Casey, man, appreciate you coming on the show and, and hang out for a little while. Keep us posted through the summer as, as things progress with Bad Habit and the schedule over there at Stoneboro and uh, anything that might be coming up in the off season. Oh, absolutely, and uh, thanks for having us on. And, uh, you know, thanks for you guys being there and, you know, getting Florida and its hospitality and its great environment out to everybody. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you're looking for a vacation and a demolition derby all in one, I mean, this is the place to do it next <laughs> February if they, if they have it in February. I mean, yeah. there's just oh. every, everything from Disney to CSPT Beach to you name it down here. Volusia. Yeah. Volusia. Right? Volusia. Sounds good, man. You bet, nice, Casey. Nice job. Nice to meet you. Nice All talking right. to you. Yep. We'll see you. See you later. There goes Casey Smith. Uh, just wanted to make mention May Mania coming up here right around the corner. We <laughs> That's good. That's right there around the corner. We've got um, before that, though, next month, it's 
Capital Just about City a weekend Carnage. from, it's uh, about four weeks from right now, Capital City Carnage, March 17th and 18th, 2016, 10000 to win for that one. Uh, we've got the driver's list almost set and finalized and the new fully automated fantasy league will be released most likely next week. Everything fully is fully automated. Fully automated. You basically go to a location and you will be able to pick your team from a drop town. It automatically populates the fantasy scoring. So Hello. we should be we should be good to go with that. Ten thousand to win limited world class, nine thousand for second, eight thousand for third. Wait one second. Uh, seven thousand for fourth, six thousand for fifth. Five thousand for sixth, on down to tenth. Fifty thousand uh, dollar, or excuse me, sixty thousand dollar total payout. Five thousand dollar Mad Dog Award. Two hundred bucks to enter that. Uh, email Candace yeah. for more details on on that yeah, one. Candace that at Ultimate Derby. There's Johnny Gullo, who's anxiously Can waiting to Gumby's there join us here. <laughs> you, think, you think so? <laughs> yeah, Gumby put a Gumby put a bounty on Johnny's head in Florida. So, yeah, but I did that years ago, and I won it. <laughs> Johnny, with all the he's been, trying, he's been trying to get even ever since. It didn't work. <laughs> with, with all the travel that you've done since uh, Halloween Havoc, I got to believe that Florida's been the best trip that you took, right? Well, I tell you what, if I'd have known the beach was like that, we'd have stayed at least another week. And I think next year when we go, we are going to stay a week and hit uh, Daytona NASCAR the, the next Sunday. Yep. I think that's Perfect. the way to wrap up that trip. Absolutely. Yes. yes. And yeah, make, cause, get cause, to Volusia Dodge some sprint cars too. Because yeah. they are going to continue uh, to have it during in that time frame. Speed weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Why There's not? I know it's thirty five degrees and raining here, so I want to go back. It was it was sunny and forty here today. It wasn't. Yeah. That's going to be eighteen tonight. That's all right. You, you're getting wrapped up in the numbers, Ben. It was sixty you here that. Saturday. <laughs> they didn't get it wrapped up in no numbers. I didn't want to get the hell on that plane. <laughs> <laughs> It was nice here over the weekend. It was, it was beautiful. It was, it was real Shirts nice. Shirts and t-shirt. Yep. I took the kids down to Radio Hill with me for I saw a little that. while. Yep. And then uh, uh, they proceeded, while I was on the phone with those guys, they proceeded to run around outside in mm-hmm. the mud, and we had to leave because they were so soaked. Mm-hmm. Really? Oh, yeah. Yep. He, was, he was flipping. They, yeah. were, they, were not, they were not the best listeners. Then I took Alan down to run in the RC Derby on Sunday, and he proceeded to stick his head out the door and throw up all over the sidewalk. So we got to bring him home again. Nice. nice. That was fun. But Did I? Again. The, the, they the, they the, stole my sand, Josh. You'll have to call Josh. I don't Josh sand from that beach. That was like flour. Yeah. yeah. And I had it in my bag, and they took it out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> man. Now i got to take my wife all the way back. Well, well they, they probably thought it was some other type of white powder you're yeah. bringing back from Florida. Either cocaine or napalm. Yeah. <sighs> but no, they, uh, it's, he's going to get to it, but you ought to hear the... <laughs> The stuff that he told me, Johnny told me about the Utah shows. Yeah, how's how's Utah coming together for this Ooh. season? Right, well, before we get there, I want to give a shout out and a thanks to to JC Molly, John Cash, and everyone that put that on down there. I mean, for their inaugural event, it turned out really, really well. It was a lot of fun, good time. If you if you're freezing in February and you want to go do something next year, go have some fun. It's a pretty good endorsement. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then uh, next year, they lost a couple sponsors at the end, so the prize money dropped. So Stern Dirt's going to drop in a thousand for them next year. Perfect. Very cool. Like the sounds of that. Absolutely. Does that come with some sort of guarantee that you're not going to end up on the wall? <laughs> well, you know, they, they built me and Troy a hell of a car, but with one brake, a stock rear end, and not a ton of power against them, those uh, Casey's team, which were <laughs> nasty cars. <laughs> And he lined up on me, and I went for a ride because I had nothing. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, did you uh, mention anything about being up on the wall to Josh when you were sitting there? Did you mute the mic and just lean over and mention anything well, about th- the wall? If you really want the truth of the matter, yeah. they told me to drive like Josh, so I did. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> wow. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> yeah, I was going to go there, but I, you know, since Johnny did, I don't actually, have to. Actually, Johnny busted Josh's balls on that. Well, yeah, a little bit earlier in the day, so and, uh, <laughs> that was that's that was pretty ironic. So that was turnabout, like that. huh? <laughs> yeah, karma. Yeah. Derby gods were listening. <laughs> yeah, yep. Uh, well, I, Jeff, fun. You, you and Troy have a good time. Oh, we had a riot. I, like I said, had I known the landscape and what was around that area, I've never been to that side of Florida. Um, we definitely would have made a you know a longer weekend out of it. Hmm. 
uh, in the topics of longer weekends, I've I've had a chance to prove some of the schedules, and uh, I'm liking I'm liking the way things are looking for uh, the Stern Dirt schedule in 2017. Oh, absolutely! We got the news. I broke it uh, last Saturday about uh, um, Wasatch County Derby, which is up in Heber, and we're going to pull off an eighty-four thousand dollar payout, of which seventy-four thousand of it is for the actual. Uh, main cars wow. <laughs> and then we're going to do a $5,000 truck heat and a $5,000 to be determined heat one and done wow uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty impressive and there, there, we still got some details to work out and stuff but right now it's uh, looking like 25 to win half of that for second half of that for third half of that for fourth and everyone else in the main will get a thousand mm-hmm on Friday night with the um, heats, we'll start a stopwatch when the heat starts, and at the five-minute mark, we'll have some judges in the stand, and if they determine someone's mad dog in it, we will stop the heat, pay them $1,000, and tell them to pull their car out and go to the main event. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. That We've seen a couple other places awesome. do this, and yeah. the fans Bash love it. Yeah. it last year. Well, uh, so did Crossroads, Crossroads yeah. Destruction, and, and I anticipate they'll be doing the same thing again this year is, is stopping it, and it, it gets drivers going. Oh, yeah. And, oh, and it, can get, it can get expensive quick in five minutes. The oh, whole yeah. problem is, is is Utah guys don't need to get going. <laughs> <laughs> they're already, they're yeah. already when they how drop you go, the green flag, they're already going. How do you go over on, the top again? Yeah, they're already going 100, so yeah. this is just going to make them go 110. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is gonna be this is awesome. I mean, when Johnny was telling me this stuff, yeah, I mean, he's not even done yet. So I, I'm just gonna shut up. I like the bold the bold letters in the in, in this right here says if earned. You have to yeah. earn it, right? <laughs> what yeah. do you gotta do? No, so so they know what they're getting into, and we hope to have all the details out. We want to open registration this Friday. I'm um, assuming I can get the website done and you know all the nuts and bolts put together for it. Mm-hmm. Um, it will be three days. Thursday will be inspection, followed that night by dinner party with band and food, uh, heat draws, driver's meeting. Mm -hmm. Friday, you get to enjoy Park City because it's a mixed Park City. Go do what you want. Hang out. We'll open the pits at 4 o'clock for the 7 o'clock show. And come and they're one and done on Friday night. So kind of an easygoing deal Saturday morning. We'll open the pits at 8, and uh, you work on your car from 8 till 2 because it is July and it is a little warm. We'll shut the pits down and at 2 o'clock, reopen them 4 o'clock, and uh, then we'll finish off the night with the grudge matches, fillers, and main event, and a wipeout. So what's this, what's this wipeout portion of the card all about? So, for those that are left, we're going to do an extra, if they want to throw $100 in, any of the cars that want to go out there, because a lot of these guys are coming from a far way, however many cars at 100 bucks, they can determine how they want to split that up. You know, at winner take all for second, Mad Dog, don't really care, it's up to them to decide how they want to spend the money, and it's just a free-for-all. <laughs> that sounds fun. Yeah. Most of Utah's a free for all. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much the entire that. schedule is a free for all. <laughs> oh cool. man! Um, so uh, I don't know if you brought the list home. I did email it over to Chris this morning. Yeah, I, I got the list somewhere in my bag yet. But <laughs> good thing you emailed that to Chris. <laughs> well, I, well, Jimmy Johns was there and I'm talking to him, and I'm going through. And he says, "Give me that list." I'm, tell- I'm talking to the boys. <laughs> so I think Jimmy's oh, coming out. And- the gags. Can you imagine? I was just going to say that. That was the first thing I thought of. Can you imagine if, if, if Jimmy is on the sidelines coaching the two gig boys out there? That would be awesome. Oh, Jimmy's going to run. No, this isn't his driving yeah. style. And if you're getting Facebook on the rules, it'll be May Mania rules uh, with some tweaks. Yep. Uh, yeah, it said, uh, it's, it's said in here the 80s, the, the, 80, the retro class rules. So that's, that's retro sort of class rules, throws right. Back to, throws back to the May Mania setup. Which... which you, you classified those as what for the guys back east so they know what they're building. It's kind of a heavier limited weld, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it, it, it's that's, that's kind of what it is. We used I mean, to do it 10 years ago. 
No, I mean it's it's that's what it's, that, that's what Utah used to be ten years ago. Ten years ago, yeah. 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 New York, we I don't even know who we've got there yet. <laughs> no, I mean it's 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 definitely. I mean it's for for the amount of money for the amount of money that's being paid out. Oh 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 oh, eighty cars. Yes. Yeah. Eighty car limit. Yeah, for wow. the amount of money that's being paid out, it it, it is not a it, it's not a time consuming build. I mean, it, it's a build that, that anybody in around this area you, you know, a month you'd, you you'd be done painted and and ready to rock and roll. That's you cool. know, in um in for the freaking amount of money that's that's getting put out, I mean, it's you're crazy not to. Yes, it's 30 whatever, 38 hours, 36 hours, whatever. That's all. It's, what is it to, what is it from Buffalo, Johnny? What drive wise? It was 30 it was 30 Six hours straight through from Buffalo. Okay, so thirty six. It's eight. It's we are eighteen to to Topeka. We were twenty two or twenty one to Bash for Cash. Okay, twenty to Metal Mayhem back in the day when we went there. Yep. So that kind of you know from where you are in the country, so, that kind of gauges you where you're at. Yeah. So guys around this area, they pretty much know hours. it's 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 because it, they go to Bash for Cash and tons of guys go to Bash for Cash here. So twenty two hours from Bash for Cash, it's doable. Absolutely. Easily. Exactly. Easily doable. You said 36 hours from Buffalo? And, and you guys through. have been here. Anyone that that's coming from that far, please, please stay a couple of days and check out Utah. Yep. You know, park your stuff at my trip, my house. We'll, we'll lock it up, keep it safe, jump in your car, take your family, mm-hmm. go to West Yellowstone, see the Canyonlands. Too much to do here. There's a lot you got that right. There is tons of stuff to do there. I mean, and every time we come out, we're like, yeah, hey, we're going to stay longer next time. And it's just... <laughs> Josh is talking about moving out there. Yes, he is. Yeah, his room's ready. I can't wait for him to move out. There, he hasn't like, heard what the rent payment is yet. But. It, it, <laughs> there's three pages of Walder's well, fabricators wanted out there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm talking. I'm I'm thinking about being like a snowbird instead of going to Florida. Go to Utah in the winter. Right. Yeah. Why not? I don't know how many Utah derbies your back would take. No, I'm not gonna drive. I'll build cars. Oh, well, I think that's a perfect. Then. I think that's a perfect idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'll build cars and Josh can drive them uh, once. 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 <laughs> Actually, take. we can build cars and then when Bolton flies back out again to drive another truck, run them out, or, man. We can just start migrating guys out there. I could be like perfect. the home base. Johnny's Johnny's not going to tell you no. No, I know he's not going to say no. <laughs> if you're waiting for Johnny to talk you out of it, it's not coming. Because I'm telling you, we've well, and we've said yeah, it before. I'll, I'll, I'll start the housing apps right now. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've we've talked about it many many times and keep saying it over and over again. I mean, Utah Utah is the shit. Utah oh, yeah. is the place to be. Really, I mean, this really could work out great for Johnny if he plays his cards right because you could build you could build cars in the evening. That would only run at his shows, and it would really solve some of the hiring issues that he's got at some of the Burger Kings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Could you imagine Josh asking free, if you want fries with that? lunch and a shop to build in. There you go. <laughs> and Josh and I would work at the drive through at night. <laughs> That'd be terrific. Mm. Mm. I don't know. That, that, that uh, um, my speed of service would go to shit because Josh would talk too much to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> no, he'd just get mad if somebody came in and said, no, I asked for a plain hamburger, and you put everything it's on like, it. No, you didn't, sir. I know exactly what you asked for, and this is what you're getting. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, oh, in, all, in all seriousness, I mean, the stuff, I mean, all the stuff that really hasn't been put out yet that he's still working on, I mean, it's just crazy. It's going to be crazy out there. Mm-hmm. Well, I, after that, we roll into the all-truck derby. That's uh, $30,000, five. Five to win, two fifty just to show up at the gate. Yeah, and how That's, many in how many trucks? Is that the one limited um, to? Yeah, it, it's the iron trucks. We'll get mm, fourteen to twenty iron trucks for that. Yeah. We do a farm class truck also, and we'll get five six for that. This is the one in September, right? Yeah, this is the September seventh, I believe, is the date. The, the West Jordan beatdown, yeah. September the ninth. The, the yeah, iron truck the beat class. Down, right? Yeah, nope. five thousand to win, and, and then uh, serious money. After that, the, the next one to announce, and we'll come back in a couple of weeks. Hopefully, we got this one solidified. Is the Utah State Fair, um, brand new, state of the art, ten thousand seat stadium. It is going to be like the Golden Spike, but ten thousand seats versus five thousand. So, <sighs> those of you who've watched that, it's just crazy. 
so wait a second. I'm looking through this one more time. Just we, to... we're, we put in for, uh, I think it was $55,000 in prize money, 30 car limit. I'm sorry, Gumby says 36, but 30, 30 <laughs> car limit right now. And uh, that's... that's awesome, that but we're actually going to have some fun with that one because with $50,000, one way to look at it is give the 30 cars $1,000 each and take the 20000 for first, second, and third. Or... Make it a big this. payout. I'm kind of at the end of the year. We're thinking chain and bang. I mean, maybe your guys on the that are writing into you can give us some input on that. Um, you know, because that's burnout stage. You know, September. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. We've already got people that are. We've already got people that are celebrating the payouts and and the uh, the event structures that are messaging us so far. So I don't think you're gonna have to work too hard to get feedback. No. We'll relay no. everything that we get in terms of how they want the money dispersed. <laughs> no, they're definitely. I mean, I, I I feel the the fields will be full. Oh yeah. How just looking at this. Just looking at this real quick. If I'm reading this right, we're gonna be. Are we? Are we? Is, is the the story that we're going out there for these? But the three for sure. Three for May, sure. May, um, Wasatch, and Havoc. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> depending on what our depending on what our budget comes in at the state fair and what your schedule is, we'd love to have you back for that one. So, do we have a do you have a date on the state fair yet? State fair date is the um, seven days after. Okay, so that'd be the fourteenth. Yeah, September fourteenth. Okay, whatever that Saturday is, second Saturday. Okay, fourteenth of what? Just you know what? Never mind Josh's right. room. I'm just going to take that on a couple weeks at a time basis. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? I mean, we better just do all of them. <laughs> I'll have the beer brewed, the moonshine ready, and your bed ready, Josh. So whatever you want. You Josh, know, isn't, just, Josh isn't here. Tell your, tell your wife you're not going to see her for two months. And... The, 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 one, the one problem that we've got tonight is that you're talking to Chris and Josh isn't here. <laughs> oh, I thought Josh was there. I apologize. No. Yeah, that's, that's okay. I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I saw firsthand Minnesota. I, I can never hear that well on this. Show. I know it's the high tech. It's the high tech sticking a phone and a headset next to a microphone rig. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Well, and, that, and then after that one, we finish off with Halloween Havoc, which everybody knows about. So yes, uh, right. Yes. We might we might be moving that to the new stadium also. So oh, we'll yeah. find out. But that one, that's just a crazy show. That's just a party. Yep. You were there. Yes, I can't wait. Can't wait to get back there. I'm looking forward to return trips to Utah periodically through the summer. It's gonna be an, it's gonna be an awesome time. Certainly looking forward to that. And and with the announcements now, everybody out here is just gonna be looking more and more towards that. And and I know Dano is gonna be already salivating at the chance of getting out there a couple times. You're just gonna have to leave a 30 gallon drum of sunscreen at Gullo's house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a swimming pool. Just jump in and. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> when in Rome, do as the Romans. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, uh, when do we want to talk about, and maybe we can get some feedback on the uh, keeping the hitting hard and the bagging down, what we talked about? Um, yeah, yeah, we, we can we can work into more of that stuff. It, it, it was functional uh, last time uh, in terms of working with uh, Facebook and making driver's polls, which was cool. It worked. Um, what we need to do though is get people to a stop voting ahead of time because if the heat's not on the track yet, you probably can't vote for them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and 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 b the second part of that is is stop adding names to the list because if Josh Decker wasn't on the track, there's no need to vote for him as a heavy hitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we but, were we were laughing about that because it 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 was people were voting for like. The heats like two heats from now. Mm -hmm. They're voting for the people already, and it's yeah. like, well, they haven't even hit the track yet. What we so. did is we made we made events. We worked with Sterner, and we made events, and we made polls on the pages to where people could vote for heavy hitters. Well, after the heat was over with, we had we had a combination of votes that we would we wait a small period of time. Once the heat was over with, everybody yeah. generally had voted by then, so we had voted at that point, and it worked. It was a way to get the people interacting with us and stuff. And mm -hmm. I think what we might do is is, is we want to make the event through Crash Course so that we can we can use that to sort of drive all together, mm -hmm. and use that to weigh in with uh, the fan voting. Um, and we would, if you noticed, Ben doing a lot of talking for a small period of time, and me doing a lot of clicking. It's because I was busy entering all the names in, and I was trying to stay ahead as best I could. And I made the error of putting some of the list out ahead of time. 
which let people go vote prematurely before anything happened. Oh yeah, which was which was funny because yeah. we had a guy that had like a six point lead, and then his heat was still two rounds away. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, no, that's why we had you guys having a second vote, and then the arena officials had a third vote. So we, you know, we kind of did a majority of the three one. <laughs> right. It was it was cool, and it was it, it generated a lot of interaction. But then, um, what we never thought about was having to lock the poll after the fact because then. Three days later, somebody had 34 more votes than anybody else and everything was over with. It's like, yep. well, they should have won Mad Dog. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, that's not how it worked because once the, once the next seat started, that voting that pretty much ended. Yeah. It's, yep. But it was, it was a lot of fun. The interaction, the, the, the conversation was great. Um, the arguments, eh, could have lived without them, but it was entertaining the less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I, I don't remember. There was a group. We were loaded into a group – conversation it was it was me and i think you were in it on facebook and and josh were all put into the same group message about how dumb we were <laughs> regarding regarding the fan vote because it was like the first heat of the night mm-hmm. and we had everything done it was like nine heats later and a bunch of guys had gotten more votes it's like that's already over there's, yeah. there's nothing more to go back to but i liked it it was it was definitely a, a new element to it that we hadn't tried any place else and mm-hmm. cool. it's, it was Certainly drove that fan interaction part, like you were asking, Johnny. Cool, right? Which is cool. I mean, that's mm-hmm. it's kind of like a fantasy thing, but you get to participate. Right. Yes, you get to you get to control some destiny for some of those guys that are out there on the track. You know, whether they're whether they're in their cars, in the pits, in the stands, or in the emergency room. <laughs> 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 that's why. Yeah. But uh, so you're going to catch up with us here in a couple of weeks. Be back to talk a little bit more about some of the other stuff as it comes together. Yeah. Um, Look for have everyone get on uh, Stern Dirt Racing Facebook, and we'll get everything posted. Like I said, hopefully by the end of the week. I, as you know, I've got my restaurant that's op- grand opening again, 20 years anniversary next week. So I'm kind of asses and elbows this week. So mm-hmm. my plan is to have that ready to go Friday for registration. Okay. We may have more details to come, um, or we may change a few things. You know, making it better, not taking away. Right. Right. Um, but uh, you know. The, the one thing we talked about on that, because uh, the one thing is, is all the money is going to bring the backers. All right. We get that. We understand that. So, like me and Ben and Josh were talking in Florida, says, what if you took that? And this is where guys can comment back in. Yeah. Okay. After 20 minutes of the heat, 25000 And remember, the, the Mad Dog's making five grand in this heat. Right, right. If at 20, uh, 20 minutes... They just start doing the, the, you know, running for the money. You take a thousand off the twenty-four, put it on the Mad Dog. Two minutes later, take another thousand off, put it on the Mad Dog, and that Mad Dog's just going to keep increasing. And first place goes down. <laughs> you you, th- you think that'll make them step on the throttle a little bit more, Chris? <laughs> wow, yeah. I think so. I think after twenty-one minutes, it'll be you over know, by. You know, you know, and it, it won't be Josh. But if it was Josh and he won Mad Dog and he only last five minutes, he's he's. His money's going up. Hell yeah. Doing nothing. And he ain't even driving. Oh right. yeah. He's out there telling them guys, slow down, slow Take down. Take it easy. Oh, take yeah, your time. Right <laughs> out there and hold their flags on him or something. So yeah. you said, Ben started to say something about 21 minute mark. It's like at the 21 minute mark at the feature, we're going to be tearing down the podcast break. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> no, no, no. What, I'm sa- what, I'm, what I'm saying is, 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 is 100% right. I mean, when, it, when, it, when it, it, that is the, the uh, awesome idea because the, the, I, when we've said it, Many, many, many times, you, you, you know, you could drive this way in this region. You could drive this way at this region. But the expectations are in your – the expectation in driving style that's expected at this show is not something that's at a marathon pace. You're expected. It's, it's for, this amount of, for, for this amount of money, the fans are looking for a show. Performance Absolutely. based contract. They're not yet. Yeah, you are absolutely. paid to perform. They're they're on a <laughs> yeah they're yeah they're on a performance development program. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, that's, I don't think that's exactly what. <laughs> but, but, what but, but what I'm saying. Well, what, long story short. So this back to you guys. I'm asking the drivers for input. Right. Feed it back go. to you guys, and I'll call you guys on another day and see what what they res- responded to you, or they can PM me directly, and uh, we'll just go from there. But yeah, we're tons excited. We should know by the end of this week on that uh, other show. We're thinking stock build also for that thirty car count, fifty thousand awesome. dollar thing. So, but uh, Heber's going to be real exciting. 
Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll be in touch with more after you get through this week. I know you're wrapped up with that stuff, but I'll get a hold of you once uh, once we get to the end of the month, early part of March. All right, guys. Take care. All right, Thanks, guys. Johnny. See you. Yeah. Stay warm. Talk to you later. Yep. Take it easy. Johnny Gullo. Holy cow. But there's some news, huh? I was hoping he was going to come up with that because when we were talking about it down there. I'm like, yes, that's the best idea in the world mm-hmm. because I tell you what, it doesn't take long for people to start doing the math and saying, okay, at 20 minutes, if this is not over, you better put your foot down Absolutely. or you're going to start clicking off thousands every minute. And I tell you what, that the minutes then are going to go real fast. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And uh, just I, I cannot get over it, but – 10,000 seats. A 10,000 seat arena. That's huge. That is going to be full. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, it, it, it's. <laughs> but there's other. I'll tell you guys afterwards the other stuff that he was telling me, uh. you know, but man, it's. it's Did it's, you guys see the pictures on Facebook from the uh, um, remote controlled drone at Winter Slam? Did you see the pictures they, of all they, the people? They, they actually had a drone. There's an there's actual. Uh, production company that that works an advertising production company that works with with that with the fairgrounds there and does a lot of other events they actually had a drone up and were flying around and uh got some cool footage and, and stuff yeah, that's, that's they're what... gonna they're gonna use for for marketing for yeah. advertising for the next one yeah um that's what randy was doing with yeah. his it was but they put up some of the pictures and to see from Fat above from, to see from above the amount of people that were there that was amazing there we go we got Jim Olin joining us right now uh, to come on and talk a little bit about Finger Lake Speed World, which is coming up on uh, March 4th and 5th. Move-in night is March the 3rd. Small doors open at 2 o'clock for tables and, and small displays and at 6 o'clock for all the cars. And this is an all walks of motorsports um, interactive, almost a trade show, so to say, if you will, at the Finger Lakes Mall in Auburn right there on 5 and 20. And all walks of motorsports are welcome. And in the... In, in that same vein, last year we had Josh Decker's uh, Rosa car on display in the former Joanne Fabrics building, and this year Jamie Brown going to be bringing a car in addition to a number of other drivers talking about bringing combative motorsports entries out there. Jim, man, how are you? Oh, I am excellent. How are you doing? Uh, we're doing okay. We're getting getting through this one. Episode number 169 going to be wrapping up here in just a little bit, but I wanted to catch up with Jim a little bit. And first of all, just say thank you to uh, to Jim and Finger Lake Speed World because they've they've made this thing all inclusive. It's not just for dirt modifieds. It's not just for race cars. Even there's bikes, there's mic rods, there's snowmobiles, there's you know there's there's everything. Um, I don't know about up. snowmobiles. We haven't heard any of those yet. Uh, You're that's, I'd love well, to have one. Well, Jim, just hold tight till a couple of weeks. <laughs> 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 might have been a little premature oh. with that, but nonetheless, um, you guys have got all sorts of uh, all sorts of stuff going on over there. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, we've done everything from uh, basically the ground up, and and uh, you know, starting out with uh, last year bringing the RC Derby there, and that was a huge success last year. That uh, that drew quite a quite a crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and having the Rosa car in there, that was great. Uh, so many people ask me about that. You know, they walk right by a nice, shiny, brand-new Sports and Modified and go up there to see a wrecked demolition derby car. That cracks me up. But I'll tell you what, you know where the fans are. Right. And uh, so there's that. Um, you know, you're going to be sharing your space again this year with uh, the guys that do. Uh, Dale Darling does the Power Wheels racing. We're mm-hmm. trying to make that a bigger event this year because I'll tell you, it gets the kids out there, it gets them excited, gives them something to do. Um you know, and, and because it's a free show, we encourage people, you know, bring the families, bring bring the kids out. We got stuff for them to do. It's going to it's gonna be a good time. It's going to be a good weekend. It's going to be an awesome time. Alan's got a fresh car built. He didn't get a chance to run it this weekend, so he's got a fresh Buffalo Bills-themed car. Now i got a couple weeks before we got to run it, so I feel like get some up. wraps done for him. No, no, probably cheated, yes. Um, I, I almost won this weekend. I had a I shot. saw that oh, second place. Second place. Was there only two cars in the Dude, derby or what? No, there was there was five. Wow, was oh, five that's in still there. not bad. But it's not bad. J- Jerry and uh, Jerry and James Brown. It came down to those two and me, and I was having some trouble steering my car. I did some updates on the car, and it reversed the steering. And Ooh. I never thought to do anything with it until I got out there. And every time I turned to go right, it would go the other way, and I was driving to the wall and stuff. And I went to. Tr- Jamie Brown burned a transmission. Transmission wouldn't move anymore, or the battery died. He couldn't really figure out what it was, and it was me and his brother. And his brother's won the last two. So I took a swing at him, and I drove right up on the back of a dead car and got hung. And he came, and he tapped my back bumper just about like that. 
and then you backed away and let the time run out. But it was it was cool. The changes helped a lot. I'm I'm looking forward to getting Auburn Mall. That's cool. And and running out there, it's gonna That'd be, be f- like your hometown show, wouldn't it? it? Yeah, pretty close. Pretty close. It's about the about the best it's gonna get. I spent a lot of time in Dundee though. <laughs> yeah, you have, you have spent some time in Dundee. <laughs> Oh, and it's nice having a nice. It's nice having an empty mall at your disposal. Um, as long as uh, as long as they keep it open, we're going to keep doing it too. So, uh, yeah, and it's probably a little different with you guys running on the linoleum for the derby too. It's probably a little different for the ground crew having to clean rubber off the of linoleum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let's talk about the guy who had to clean the rubber off the floor last year. Uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's it's going to be it's going to be big. I've gotten I was out there today putting up posters and handing out flyers, and I put some flyers out on their little kiosks out there, and um, got a lot of confirmations from people who are actually coming out. And I got a referral from you from the uh, folks from South Butler Drags. They will be there. That's awesome. Uh, they going to bring some cars too. Bring out a table, and they were they were unaware that they could bring cars out. They thought that uh, they weren't sure if they could bring cars out, and I said absolutely. She said how much? I said nothing, zero, not it. Just bring your cars out, set them up. Yeah doesn't cost Therefore. anything to display, and you don't maybe necessarily have to pre-register. If you show up there with a car on yeah, we'll find a spot for Friday you. at 6 o'clock, they will find some place to put it. Zach Herman was talking about bringing the car that he ran at Walton last year. It still has a broken motor mount in it, so the motor's all skied over sideways. He was talking about bringing that, but then I saw this weekend he was working on derby cars, so it makes me nervous if he's going to make it over or not. So we'll have to see. We'll have it to was see funny. This was probably a month or two ago we were over at Bass Pro, and then we were going to get something to eat, and we were walking through. I remember... When my brother was first started driving for Bill Trout, we took a small block car over there and they had mm-hmm. a race car show and we put it in the in the mall and explained to the kids that, you know, we pushed, they're like, no, you can't bring race cars here. And I'm like, look, buddy, we brought race cars in here. So uh, we, we may stop over and check stuff out depending on uh, what my work schedule is that weekend and stuff. And just, you know, go over well, and walk through because I just. We'll tell you that pushing, pushing cars through the mall is over with. We, uh, we got, we got some help from our buddy Frankie Dahl that works over at, uh, Bass Pro. They sell the, uh, bad boy buggies over there mm-hmm. and they have volunteered some of their equipment over there. They said it's good for them because they have to exercise them. Otherwise the batteries go dead and they don't come back. Mm-hmm. So they're going to have some buggies charged up waiting at the door and all you got to do is drop your harness on there and they will drag you in and put you wherever you got to go. Nice. So, back, back in the actually, olden days, they, they hadn't invented those yet. So. What's that? Back in the olden days, they hadn't invented those bad boy buggies yet. So it was <laughs> the only thing that ran on batteries was power wheels. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it, it, it was. It was human horsepower pushing those cars around in there then. So yep. that wasn't. Well, quite they did it last year too, and 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 they, everybody pushed their cars in, and you know you got a car most modified and everything like that. Unless they pull the axles out of them, they don't turn. No. Uh, in, inside, especially on the carpet, and um, so they they one of the buggies came down last year and they uh they dragged a couple of cars out and i said geez that's a great idea so i knew who to talk to this year and um we've also got a lot of spots available with power this year they fixed the uh there's a power grid that runs up the center of the floor of the mall and more than half of it was dead and they decided to get it all working again so now we have i think there's 17 or 18 different spots in the center part of the common hallway that have power so that's a big thing for us guys that want to light up their displays Cool. And bring videos and stuff like that. So, plus, nice. gives you a pretty good spot to do a podcast. You know, you don't have to run off batteries or solar or whatever. No, we're not running off solar. I don't know. I don't know who lied <laughs> <Not> to you. <yet. laughs> we're not there yet. I'd love to, but that's not the case. Uh, we're still we're still tied down. It's a number of special events being held in conjunction with Finger Lake Speed World at Auburn Mall, fourth and fifth, March the third. Is off road racing at Small Addictions RC. That starts at six thirty. That's just after move in commences. So if you're looking for something to do while you're waiting for your turn to get pulled in by one of those bad boy buggies, you can check out Small Addictions. Saturday, March fourth, is a very very busy day. Um, opening at eight a.m. Racing to follow at eleven a.m. is a Creekside Entertainment 150 at Small Addictions RC. It's a Mud Boss RC race, part of the Mud Boss Mini Series. Stock and modified Mud Boss, along with open SCT late models, $20 entry. Uh, second class is 15 at Small Addictions. In all, uh, Finger Lake Small, uh, Small Addictions helped out a ton in terms of getting the show up and on its feet. So we're uh, in debt to them. 31st Lap Podcast is going to go live at noon. It's going to be outside Small Addictions. So hopefully we can direct the camera inside and we can see the racing that's going on. And then final round podcast with the Western New York Super Rod Association is going to go live at 2 o'clock. Turn 5 podcast with Stephen Ovens is going to be live through the afternoon as well. And then Sunday, March the 5th at 11 a.m., Crash Course podcast is going to be live in the uh, Joanne Fabric um, storefront. And then at 3 o'clock, the RC Demolition Derby is going to go off, and there's going to be three divisions there. Modified, which is the national rules, 
than the stock class, which are the paper cups. And Ed Brewster is unveiling a demo run for the truck division, which are basically El Caminos. And he has backing from Steel Horse Harley Davidson with some really, really cool announcements. Connect the dots however you will. Some really cool announcements pertaining to Steel Horse Harley out of Midlothian, Virginia, regarding some RC action coming up later on this year. Um, Jim, it's uh, it, it, I can't believe the feedback for the show, and you've got to focus on uh, a focus on photography, right? The the, yeah, the special fo- focus on racing is here. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's been a big thing. We haven't gotten as many photographers as I thought we were going to get, but I'm going to tell you, we the the quality of the work that's going to be there will be ridiculous. You have some of the some of the best names in racing photography uh, will be there. Um, John Maloling, who uh, we we met at our creative meetings. Yep. Um, has has made some really good contacts. He's got some really really good work. Of course, your dad will be there mm-hmm. uh, with Mike Scataglia from Paradise Speedway. Um, Taylor Moran will be there from Taylor Moran Photography, and we've had a few other you know throw their hat in the ring, but no confirmations yet. Right. Uh, Woodhull Raceway at this point has agreed to be on board. Um, Oswego Speedway, correct? Uh, or no? Excuse me, not Oswego. Can Am Motorsports Park is going to be um, have, involved. Have Here. not. Can Am, no. Uh, I can tell you that Oswego, we have not heard back from. Uh, Paradise, Starlight, Outlaw Speedway will be there. Um, have not heard back from Canada Gateway yet, which I was kind of disappointed there because it's right in their kitchen. Um, rolling Wheels, who knows what's going on there, and <laughs> still waiting to hear back from Weedsport. What about some of the What about some of the tours? Um, we do have a confirmation. It's 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 in really 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 good pencil from the SRP or not the SRP I'm sorry the Patriot Sprint Tour uh-huh. uh, the SRP is backed out um, Daryl Ruggles will have his car on hand he does run part of the Patriot I do believe and part Ooh. of the ESS tour right um, but he's actually going to be there with Outlaw Speedway awesome Outlaw oh. Speedway going to be present as well um, yep very good well, anything else that we got to know about. Anything else we got to know about this one? You can jump online, find Finger Lake Speed World. It's facebook.com forward slash Finger Lake Speed World, all one word. And you can jump on there. You can send any messages or inquiries. By all means, if you've got a car around that, that's that's in pieces, last year um, I remember watching a bunch of guys attempt to push a 1968 Newport with a front bumper shoved around the wheels uphill to get out of there before the bad boy buggy came to the rescue. Yeah. But oh. <laughs> um, I, will, I will tell you for our exhibitors that are coming in on Friday night at 8 o'clock, there will be a meeting at a uh, spot yet to be determined in the mall. We're trying to figure out our, our home base situation because I'm going to be there with my, uh, my girlfriend and my by then four month old daughter. Um, she will be, we need, a, we need a spot for the pack and play and all that good stuff because it's a family thing. Uh, as soon as I figure that out, we'll have a meeting. I'm ordering uh, pizza and beverages and everything from the places in the mall. Uh, there's a pizza shop right there. I believe it's J- JJ's Pizza or J&J's Pizza. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're going to hook us up with a deal. So everybody gets fed Friday night. From All the exhibitors, come on in and grab yourself a bite to eat. and You know, good stuff. Good Perfect. Stuff. Yeah. That sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will, uh, I'll be catching up with you here in about a week or so. And uh, if anything else comes up, let me know. We'll, we'll get some more stuff out there, and we'll talk to you next, not this coming Thursday, but a week from Thursday on uh, Final Round. We'll talk a little bit about the the show with the Drag Racing Corps. You got it. Thanks a lot, Jim. We'll catch up with you soon. Cool, Chris. Take care, man. See you later. There goes Jim Mullen with Finger Lake Speed World. Open to anybody. If you got something left over, bring it over. They'll find a way to drag it in. Hmm. But make sure you have some uh, tarp or some plastic put underneath it because they frown on it when you drip oil and all their liquids out of derby cars all over the floor. Mm-hmm. They do frown on it. Get grumpy with that, huh? They got grumpy with that, and they also don't like having it. They, they said the only way that we could have the derby back is if we stuck around to help them clean the floor. <laughs> so you're going to help clean the floor? Yeah, I'll find somebody to help. Just mm-hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the Josh Decker method. I'll sit in the chair and direct others. That's exactly <laughs> what you should do. Delegate, delegate, delegate. Delegate, delegate, <laughs> delegate. terrible? <laughs> Uh, Smash Demolition Derby, the uh, uh, Bash for Cash coming up just around the corner. Chillicothe, Ohio is the, the location of that one. Ross County Fairgrounds on the 26th, 27th, and 28th online, smashitderby.com. A bunch of our uh, friends of the show have been uh, listed as the approved vendors for 2017. Among them, Big Rock Derby Products, Catskill Fabrication, uh, Near It Sliders, Derby Tees, DEC Headers, CIDS, uh, Destroyed Demo Puck, Lead Sled Wheels, Ski Ink, Joker's Parts. Scott Derby Tire, looking forward to getting out there and seeing those guys as part of what is turning out to be a very, very busy springtime for Crash Course. 
Derby podcast and also um, coming up around the corner, which is, I know it seems like it's a long ways away, but it's not uh, March, or excuse me, March, May 5th and 6th. Crossroads of Destruction is also looming large on the schedule, along with um, Mandan, North Dakota, with the Team Derby. That one also, that's in June, is going to be here before you know it. Once we start getting on and off planes every other weekend, it's going to fly by <laughs> like nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's why Josh and I were discussing that we need to look into TSA uh, pre-check. Yeah. We have to look into we've, that. We've definitely had that talk before as well. Yeah. And... Uh, did you get your hand swabbed again this time, or you've been pretty good? No, I was pretty good. No swabs? That's pretty good, yeah. yeah. That's good. No, no big delays. But real quick, before we go. Is I this about, hang on, is this about the, the flying first class thing? Because Josh no, messaged me no, about no, that no, all no, weekend. No, along I with don't the give a flying <laughs> shit about first cat class. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy where we're at. As long as, as, long as, as, long as so, if we fly southwest, you just bang at 24 hours ahead of time. As long as you get early B, early B seating. A's kind of, you got to pay 14 bucks, I think, to get an A class. Pass. But <laughs> um, that, everything worked out good. But just real quick, I wanted to give, uh, say, a super huge thank you to J.C. Molly and Johnny Cash and uh, Steve Saopa. And uh, Todd wasn't able to make it. Uh, but Steve, J.C. Molly came and picked us up from the airport and drove us back to the airport. Uh, just awesome time we got to hang out at the shop steve can't thank him enough for letting us stay at his house and uh, basically getting chauffeured in escalade made my daughter very jealous because i was in the escalade <laughs> but in uh you know and, and got to hang out with with steve and mark and and joey little joey i mean he's <laughs> we had a, we had a good time with joey and and and, and his cousin mark and uh uh, thoughts go out to Mark and, and his family and uh, Todd. He's he was battling an illness, I think, but he was I I was making jokes. He was probably jumping out of his recliner, screaming <laughs> at the TV when it came down to Mark at the end, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, can't thank them guys enough uh, for being open in their arms and, and and opening their homes and letting us be part of it. And uh, just wanted to say thank you. We. Uh, uh, also got to make comment that this was the first time that uh, Ben and Ben and Chris or Ben and Josh were on their own, you know, and they nailed it. Hey, you guys Absolutely were on nailed before. it. What's that? You guys were on your own before. You guys did Caledonia. Yeah. Had, yes and no. I mean, you were you were kind we were of unsupervised this yeah, trip. Yeah, we were completely unsupervised. We we're fully Everything unsupervised, was, and we were like teenagers a, going to a frat party when Dad Chris was home chomping at the bit. So. But, Chris, uh, Chris, felt, Chris was a little anxious. I'm we, sure we felt we did pretty well. Um, Absolutely. You know, we 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 didn't go to full extent. I kept joking with Josh on the way out that we're gonna basically send Chris a message and say we have no cell service at, at this event, <laughs> so we won't be able to contact him till the till we get back to Steve's. You know, after the event, but. We joked a little bit about I'd be that. able to so I'd be able to see right through that, that though. We because said, if we, you... said we better not do that because Chris will empty every liquor bottle in his house. <laughs> <laughs> so but it's completely transparent because Josh spent all weekend posting stuff on his fan page. If you yes. don't have cell service, you're not posting anything. Home well, skillet. it's a track. We're saying it's a track. Oh, it's a track. That's right. two hours. That Fair was two enough. hours Fair away enough. from when we were doing If you hit go live, live and that test worked the way that it did, and then you told me there was no cell service. I would like to know what natural disaster is yeah. for Florida. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but Cause no, because it was a great signal. If I was, if, if I hard, was, it was hardline. I mean, they brought they they actually that was another thing with that with that facility, Hernando County Fairgrounds. I like that it kind of rings. <laughs> but they um, they basically asked JC what he needed, and he said, you know, he had they had some technical term for it, but basically there was a router we plugged into, That's so cool. it was pretty much hardline. We didn't have. Did to worry it rhyme about with it. dedicated T so, one? What's that? Did it rhyme with dedicated T1? Basically, they installed one. Yes. And then they came back, and the two older gentlemen that was, he's the oldest tech guy that I've, that I've ever seen. And he, he's like the coolest grandpa in the world, must be. <laughs> and, uh, but he knew everything there was about all this technical stuff and, and, and what lines to run. And he said, I got here, and I was like, whoa, this isn't going to be enough. So I made a phone call, got it authorized, and... So I'm 10.8-6.50 yep. paragraph C section 5. Router basically went in that said, you're good now. So that's Sounds all that matters. Sounds great to me. 
have you have you got your equipment back in your possession so no. you can find it, and kiss it's it, and hug there. it? It's out in the truck. Thought how much you missed it? Yeah, it's out there. I have full faith. We discount double checked it. Thanks. They they went through it and we had a great a great meeting final round podcast did anyway and we can we can follow up with that on in, in two Thursdays from where we are right now that is going to lead us to hopefully some some definite steps forward versus the uh, how did that guy describe him the piles of junk that we work with no he didn't <laughs> say junk he just he the, just J- Josh he, told me Josh told me what he said but Josh always filters everything so I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, he had lived a little bit, but he pretty much he gave us kudos for putting the equipment through. Oh, it was positive through put it, <laughs> putting equipment through situations that it's not designed for. Period. But um, like torrential downpours. Right, that guy is a hundred percent. Probably sound great. Uh, it's kind of I don't know. It's kind of like fabricators, derby guys. Derby mm-hmm. fabricators, true fabricators, talking to, like, a NASA machinist kind of type deal. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it's kind of that difference. This guy was 100%, like, runs his own production company mm-hmm. in-house. Him and Chris could have had a nice TV station, depth. everything mm-hmm. else, and he's used to everything in a controlled environment, dust-free Definitely rain free, mud free for sure. Uh, go on. I- environment. What's I didn't that? Know like? expect- <laughs> I didn't know that expect. I didn't know there was such a thing. But you know, but no, he he was he was definitely like I said at the end of the conversation, everybody had a good time. We were laughing, and and he gave us the big thumbs up of you know you guys do a hell of a job for for what you do, and uh, that's cool. Nothing negative good came out of it. Good, good. So well, that's awesome. Well, we've done a solid hour and fifteen minutes. What do you think? Can this one cut regroup next weekend? Absolutely. Next, next and, oh wait. Yes. I also got told. Uh oh. Also got told that another basically goal was accomplished. I did my first live stream. No swearing. With absolutely no swearing. What? Christy Christy Germain sent Josh a message afterward and said, Ben did that whole show without swearing once. Congratulations. Huh. So look at that. Look at that. Florida brings out the best of That's you. That's the second accomplishment. You can put That's that one impressive. on air. You that put was, that one on TV. That was yeah. a that was a that was a that was a daily double. Absolutely. <laughs> that was a daily double. So the 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 uh, I don't know what a trifecta is going to be, but the daily we, we're taking little steps, baby I know. steps. You got to you got to grow incrementally, yep. one at a time. So basically, what we can infer from this, and and go on. The trifecta will be, capital city carnage. Yeah. Without swearing. Mm-hmm. We're live. We'll be on pay per view, mm-hmm. and I'll run a car. That will be a trifecta. That will be a trifecta. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it though. You're not gonna pull that one off. No, don't no. take it wrong. But no. the, especially the, if we have a 360 GoPro in a in a car, they can hear things. Yeah, that'll yeah, be. that's not gonna happen because I swear to everybody on the track. The, <laughs> the catalyst, of course, as we just found, is that Ben was able to go to Florida with Josh and and accomplish this and not swear, and I wasn't there. So I raise Ben's blood pressure when he comes here. <laughs> I make <laughs> I make him swear. It's on you, Chris. Yeah, well, I'll well. accept it. Well. I'll accept it. People like it when you swear. Well, I get carried away sometimes. That happens. That happens. I've lived it. I've lived it. Huh? Oh well. So we've already got some stuff planned for next week. I guess uh, uh, Chance is going to come on next weekend. Let me make sure that I found that and followed up on that message correctly. Are you going to have the helicopter to bring Mr. Ducker next week or no. is he going to be gone for a while? Chance, oh, yeah. Chance is coming on to talk about what it's like to be a young guy in the sport after he had some interaction with Jimmy Johnson down in Florida. So that'll be, that'll be <laughs> cool. Josh was, <laughs> Josh, Josh was in New Jersey today. So yeah. he couldn't, he couldn't make oh, it. Oh, doing all the work? Uh, yeah. No. That's, what he, that's, what, that's the story he keeps telling. But uh, that's going to do it for this one. Number 169 in the books. That's going to wrap up. Uh, Crash Course coming to you from the FingerLakes1.com studios. We'll be back here again next week. We'll be talking with Chance Smith and, and who knows what else we'll have waiting in the wings. We'll see everybody next time. Thanks a lot. The Crash Course Podcast is brought to you in part by DerbyParks.com. The 2015 Wadena Grand Slam. Full Lockwood Motorsports and the 2015 Keystone National. Sciopa Racing and SciopaRacing.com. Ultimate Derby and Blizzard Bash 2015. Demo Derby Masters. 
Reckless Abandoned Derby Apparel at RecklessAbandonedGear.com. And Derby Inc. Magazine. Live it, breathe it, be it, Derby Inc. This is the Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast, recorded live at the FingerLakes1.com studios in downtown Seneca Falls, New York.